Hey folks, thought I would get a little update here. It's been a while since I posted a video. Uh, this is a Teletype Model 33 Automatic Send and Receive ASR uh, Teletype that uh, I have recently restored back to operating status. And uh, today I have it connected into the Altair 680, which you've seen in another video that I've done in the past. Uh, one of the things that I couldn't do in that previous video was um, load and save software uh, without cheating at least and going to a laptop, which you know I kind of got, got going here by using this laptop that's sitting on top of the Altair. But uh, that's what the punch tape uh, reader and punch on the side of the teletype over here are for. And what I'm going to try to demonstrate today is how to use uh, editor on the 680 um, and I will be going through and putting in software from the manual which I have in PDF form here uh, using the editor so to start with I've already loaded editor um, because that takes about 35 minutes or so to load at 110 baud which is as fast as a teletype goes um, and so we will jump to its starting address which is 010 and you can either do 7 to clear the buffer or C to uh, keep the buffer intact. Um, there is nothing in the buffer and uh, I think if we tell it I think if we tell it to uh, to retain the buffer without it going through its clearing procedure we might get a bunch of gibberish in the uh, in the buffer. I'm not sure. I haven't, uh, I haven't tried. So anyhow here we are at the Altair 680 editor uh, if I tell it I want to see everything that is in the buffer, it basically has nothing in the buffer. Uh, what it was doing there when it was chugging away was putting a bunch of null characters in because if the paper tape punch was running that would put uh, a liter and a, uh, a footer on the, uh, on the tape which makes it a lot easier to get it into the, uh, into the loader. So anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and get going on this thing. So in order to begin composing, uh, you use I, which is the insert command, and then you just start typing all on the same line, and it will continue to do its thing uh, until I hit two escape characters to get it out of edit mode. So uh, this is a fairly long program as far as source code goes. So I am going to go ahead and uh, start typing this in. Um, it will go very, very slowly if I do this with one hand. So what I'm going to do then is uh, basically go ahead and type this up. And the next time that I come back with the video, you'll see a lot of source code here on the teletype. So be back in a minute. Okay, so here we have it. I've typed up the program. And uh, I've made a few mistakes along the way and I've marked them uh, so that I can correct them. Um, there are also some mistakes in the source code on purpose because this is entered into uh, the, the uh, uh, section of the assembler and editor manual where it's teaching you how to get things done. So they're going to teach you in, in this part how to do some uh, error correction and stuff. But, uh, it just says go straight into the assembler, which we'll do here. And of course we're not going to overwrite the editor. It's going to ask us which pass we want to do. And we're going to do the first pass and it's going to come up with all kinds of errors.
So yeah, apparently I made a lot more errors than the manual suggested that I should. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, jump back to the monitor. And I'm going to show you how they suggest that they would have fixed the three errors that they had injected. And that is to say, at the beginning of the file, let's see if I can get this to stay stable and focus. The beginning of the file, change, UL, comma, A, to UL, space, A, change, Run TSX to run space TSX. So all the errors that they had. I think that's all the errors that they had. So it's going to go through and make a bunch of changes to all the stuff that was in memory there. So there are two errors that I copied in are now fixed and now I gotta figure out what all the rest of these errors are I'm pretty sure that uh, it'll be really obvious whenever I start checking against my code especially the marks that I made on the code when I knew I had a mistake but uh, I'll go ahead and fix some of these and then uh, we'll come back to it I'm about to do an insert operation and I thought you might like to see the little light show that happens whenever I just insert a single character into the buffer buffer here I did a whole bunch of work there. I don't know how well that turned out. Okay, I'm going to continue editing this file and uh, we'll come back in a sec. Okay, hopefully I'm doing this right. I'm still learning this editor, so bear with me if I do something wrong. Basically, I found my way to a place where I didn't have a prepended space, so the, uh, the parser thinks that that's supposed to be a label and not a uh, mnemonic. Um, I have positioned, essentially, the cursor to the beginning of this line and I'm going to tell it to insert one space, then move four characters over, delete one character, go forward one line, repeat the same process where at the beginning of the line it pushes a, a space in there, goes across four characters, deletes one, one character. Then I want it to go back four lines and print the four lines, including these two as the last two that it's printing. And I'm going to show you the light show while it's doing that. Let's see if I can get it to focus better than last time. like it did it just fine um, but there is a BEQ that's right after that I, I didn't print enough lines so now I need to tell it to go four lines forward so that'd be one two three four lines and I tell it to print that line that should be my BEQ and he looks good all right I'm going to continue going through this and if I find anything interesting like that again uh, I'll show it to you, but you can see that I've been up here trying to figure out how to do all this uh, <laughs> this editor stuff. Uh, this is only the third day that I've been using editor, and I'm getting a little better with it each time, but uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, here's another fun one. So I'm telling it to go to the beginning of the file. I want to change this typo word in a comment to the correct spelling. Then I want to search for pull A. I'm going to go back one line and forward one line, which is kind of a, a long way of saying I'd like to position to the beginning of the line and insert a space because that line doesn't have a space in front of it. Then I'm going to search for the word bar, which should be BSR, and then I'm going to go uh, move the cursor three, three characters to the left, delete three characters, and insert BSR, which is what that should be. And so I'll show you the light show while it does this big long operation. Hopefully this will look interesting. And so that last bit was really a, a very convoluted way of saying, you know, here where it says S bar minus 3M 3D I B S R. That's a really convoluted way of saying, just simply saying change bar to B S R. Um, that's one of the most powerful features probably of this entire uh, 
this entire editor like um, let's see up here I had a mis mismatched address or a mistyped address I typed it as FFEE -E and it was supposed to be FFEE -E -E. so I say change FFEE -E to FFFE -F -E, and it went and did that so uh, I'm going to take it around a little bit more hopefully I'm not destroying the file so uh, get back to you soon so all of this text is me editing my mistakes in this file and hopefully I've got it right there's a uh, there's some uh, uh, constant bytes that get set up for messages and stuff, and uh, it's kind of hard to tell whether these are supposed to be pounds or ats, and the listing later on is not very good. The, the 212 here looks like that's an at, but this kind of looks like it might be an at or a pound. I'm not sure, so uh, I'm going to try and give it another assembly run and we'll see what it thinks about that So yeah, I guess the the ads are probably going to be right, um, but I still have two errors in the program that I got to sort out and get those. Uh, sorry, didn't even realize that wasn't focused. So I got to figure out what's going on with those two errors, and uh, we'll see if we can get this thing to compile. Okay, so those two were really easy fixes. Um, basically, here in sub B, I didn't have a space between the B and the directive for uh, uh, loading the ASCII zero in there. Um, so what I did was, first of all, I, I went all the way back to the top of the file because I went back into the editor. I told it to go 24 lines ahead because this guy was nice enough to tell me this was line 25. So starting from line 1, that's 24 lines ahead. I typed it out and saw the, that it was the correct line. I told it to search for B and search for B again and insert a space. And then went back to the beginning, went 76 lines because this one was line 77. Uh, told it to show it to me, and since the character was at the beginning of the line there, I just told it to delete this space because there shouldn't be a space at the beginning of that. Um, so to prove that is true, I can now print that line and it doesn't have a space at the beginning of it. Um, so yeah, this should assemble now. We'll go ahead and Do not want to overwrite the editor. And we'll do a first pass. We should just say enter pass. Oh, we have another error. Where is it? What is an error 001? I guess I better figure that out. Oh yeah. I know I've seen that one before. That that means hello, focus. That means that there is allegedly. no end statement so I will go to the end back up one line print it Oops. yep he thinks that there is no end at the end but if we look down here I did put an end in I just didn't put a uh, carriage return at the end of it before I exited out of the insert mode so it didn't save that line. So if I come down here to the end and I insert, we should be good. Go back into assembler. I wonder if that needs to be on the first line. Oh, you know what? I just did the exact same thing, I bet.
<laughs> okay, so... Kill that line. Well, it's being fussy. Let me figure this out. Okay, so I got that resolved. It was being really, really persnickety about how the way the way the end was actually in the end of the file. Uh, I guess there was some extra carriage returns or some spaces or something going on there. Now it's telling me, it's actually reminding me that I marked that I made an error here by calling that ermess instead of ermess. Um, and then it thinks that there's an if somewhere that I was telling it to go to. So I've got to find where that is. Um, but, uh, let's see, it'd be very easy to just go back into the editor and tell it change CR mess to RR mess. Ah, see, I'm doing it wrong already. It's going to do that, and I need to find where it thinks this if is and get that fixed. Okay, so I found all the errors now, and I also found some errors in some of my comments that I wanted to fix too. Um, but the, uh, the thing with the symbol of if not being found was that in this LDX, uh, I was supposed to be LDXing X, and I said LDX if we would return to. I started the comment, I forgot to put the register that it was supposed to be doing there. Um, so yeah, now it should come, now it should uh, assemble just fine. So uh, we'll go back into assembler. And that is a successful first pass. So next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and do a listing of the program, which I can save for later. And what I'm going to do here is going to go ahead and make it a nice clean sheet of paper by tearing this off and taking all of my editing here. All and all and all of this editing. Ah. That's editing right there. <laughs> and hit enter and we will get our program listing. So I'll go ahead and let that finish printing out. So we're in the uh, middle of printing out the uh, in the middle of printing out the program listing here. Thought it would be interesting uh, for you guys who don't know a lot about teletype to hear the margin warning bell happen every time that it gets about right here. And also to talk about this, so this is the line number from the source code, this is the memory address, and this is what the, the mnemonic and, and uh, any operator that goes with it come, uh, assemble into in machine code. And then if you remember from the, from the source, everything was scrunched together to save space and memory. And now it is, it is doing all the formatting to make this nicely readable. You come back whenever it's almost done.
Okay, coming up on the uh, the end of the program listing. So while this was going on, I noticed a couple of other little nitpicky little typographical errors. Um, so I'll jump back into the editor here and uh, we will go ahead and fix those. And then what I want to do is uh, save the source in case I ever want to come back to it. I should have done that already, but I uh, wasn't sure you know, that it was actually going to compile fine even though the first pass said no er errors. But now the listing says there's no errors. I'm going to fix those couple of last glitches, and then I'll show you how we punch the tape out. Okay, I fixed those errors, and what we're going to do is we are going to tell editor to end edit mode. And so I don't think I explained this earlier. Whenever it's showing those dollar signs, I'm not typing a dollar sign. I'm typing escape, and it ex echoes back a dollar sign to let me know that it registered the escape. So before I put the final escape in there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and turn the teletype to local mode. So now I'm not connected to the host. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the punch and then very carefully by setting the phone down into complete blackness, I'm going to hit control shift P to send nulls and I'll also do it with a repeat on it. I have put I have put a short leader on the tape here and I'll cut off these couple of bytes here at the beginning but the punch is still on I'll come back over into line mode and I'll hit escape one more time and basically what it's going to do is it's going to print the source file right here and since the punch is on it is also punching the same data there so this will allow me to come back later if I decide I want to change or add anything or if while I'm debugging stuff um, I find some bugs, I can load the source back in and then I can go back in and edit the source. So we'll come back whenever this is done. Okay, there we go. That's our source code all punched out. All 124 lines of source code, uh, including comments and everything and uh, even a printout of the raw source code which uh, I don't need to keep because I've got my program listing even though the program listing changes a couple of uh, typos they were not critical to the operation of the program so what we will do next we are at the at the prompt here for this guy we will go ahead and go back into the assembler Just to make sure that everything's copacetic. I probably shouldn't need to do this, but I'll go ahead and let it run the first pass again. And it didn't give me any errors, so that's good. So now I will turn my punch on again, and I'm going to tell it pass two to tape. And what it's going to do here is it will punch about 50 nulls. Uh, and then it will output the S record version of the program, which is what the ROM monitor loader uses whenever it loads code from the tape. Um, it will start off with an S0 header record, which will give a hexadecimal ASCII version of the name of the program. Then it's going to do an S1 record, which is a data record, which will go um, from this code up here that says uh, echo off for load. It's going to go to 00F3 and it's going to set the byte to FF which will turn off the uh, the echo for the uh, the teletype so that it can load the rest of the tape without wasting a bunch of paper. 
and it will load all of the code and then towards the end it will do the same thing again it will go back to F3 and set that to 00, zero to turn the echo back on um, as a, another S1 record towards the end that will be shorter than the, than the bulk of the program and then it'll give an S9 with a bunch of extra characters at the end I'm not sure what those characters are supposed to be for I'll have to look into that um, because once the, the once the monitor sees S9, it returns control back to the monitor prompt, and those extra characters start scrolling on the thing whenever you whenever you do the load. Anyhow, make sure my punch is on. I'll hit return, and it will start punching nulls, and then it'll start dumping out the program. that tape right there and uh, if you give me a second I'll wind it up and put uh, a label on the front of it and there we have it that's the program tape for sticks which we just made so in comparison that's the source code and this much smaller role is the compiled or excuse me assembled program so I think with no further ado, what we should probably do is exit out of Assembler. And at this point, I am very hopeful that this will run. Uh, one of the things that I did was that I relocated it to run inside a memory space that's actually installed in my machine. For whatever reason, the manual would like for this to originate at hexadecimal 4000. Um, which is well beyond the 12 kilobytes that my machine has installed. So, I'll go ahead and drop that down there, and we will get him loaded up in here. And I'll go ahead and pull it to approximately the first byte. Got one or two too far. Just saves a little time loading that I probably wasted getting it to that position. So now I'm in the monitor, which is what that little period prompt means. And I will hit L to tell it I want it to load, and it stops. 
Um, and so now I will hit start on the reader down here and it'll start chugging its way through. And that's our header, that's our echo off statement, and now it's just loading the tape into the computer. The uh, light show is not very entertaining here, sadly. Every now and then you see something blip or fluctuate a little bit, but not much. And he's going to chug through this tape. And that'll probably take a couple of minutes, so I'll cut it off right here and we'll come back when it's almost done. Okay, coming up on the end of the tape here. And there's that junk that comes out on the end that I was telling you about. So we'll just go ahead and uh, stop it right there and cross our fingers. Let's see if we can play sticks. J0100. Probably missed something that was supposed to make it not do that. That's the reason why you save your source code. Okay, so how many sticks do I want to take? I'm going to take nine sticks! You can only take one or two. You gotta go back to the rule. How many sticks do you want to take? I'll take two. must be something that I've missed in the program there, but he took one stick, obviously. So I'll take two sticks again. I'm going to win. I may have actually cheated because of that bug. It seemed like he was taking one stick every time. And it, uh, I think it is programmed to decide whether it wants to take one or two sticks. But uh, that's pretty much the development process from beginning to end. Uh, you saw me start off with a blank editor. Uh, I started inserting source code. We edited the heck out of that source code. We fixed some bugs. Uh, we assembled it. We printed a listing. We saved our source code to punch tape. And finally made an object tape. And it runs, even though I'm not sure exactly. See, I'll have to go back and look at my program listing that I printed out. Uh, and compare it to the original source, but uh, I'm not sure it's supposed to say there are now blank sticks before it says there are now 21 sticks. I'm pretty certain that he's supposed to tell me how many sticks he takes, so maybe I've forgotten to put a couple of lines into the source code. And uh, using the editor, if I take the time for it to reload and, and re, uh, reassembling it, I can fix those bugs if I can figure them out. So. How about that? I'm going to play another game.
cooked too there. Made me, made me lose. How about that? How many sticks do I take? I'm going to say zero. Hope you all had fun. This is a hell of a long video. Take care. Bye.